Discord. Hey, y'all, welcome to today's team call. It is, oh, man, it's March 30th already. What the heck it is March 30th? What should you know? So for Divine Dynasty, important things to know. I've been live a couple times discussing the preferred customer. And while that doesn't really change a lot for us, it does change titles um, with Beachbody for some of us. And so I think it's very, very important. I made a post last week with the different types of coaching or preferred customer, go in there, comment on that. If you are commenting as a hobby or above coach, I need you to personally reach out to me so that you can be a part of the Emerald tribe. That's where we teach um, business growth. That's where we mastermind. That's where we work together. If you really want to make something, anything, even if it's just helping a friend or two, then getting plugged into Emerald tribe is vital. Next thing to know is 75 for me. That is our next boot camp, and it starts Monday. We are combining it and Happier Healthier. Remember, Happier Healthier is just constantly ongoing. It's never ending, and you are always welcome to invite your people to join into it as well. But we start 75 for me on Monday, and I know some people have already, said, already started 75 hard. Woo -woo, shout out to y'all. Um, and some people are going to be starting Monday, so let's do it. Let's bring it. Let's let those non-negotiables change our life. Also, what to know, the Unwine and Cheers event that is hosted by my upline, Annie Reed. Um, she's absolutely amazing. She's from Shelbyville. Um, she is hosting this event for us so that she can meet us, so that we can all hang out because she wants to celebrate you guys. Um, that date is May 8th from 7 to 11 p.m. Totally free. They will have snack foods. They will have a open, not an open bar, where you can buy your drinks if you want to buy your drinks, whatever that is. They'll have a bar where you can buy your drinks if you want drinks. Um, and that is May 8th from 7 to 11. You simply have to email Annie and let her know that you will be there. Your significant other is welcome just as well. The quarter two trip. So starting April 1st, that is when the second quarter begins. The second quarter goes from April 1st to June 30th. And then the rewards day will be July 14th. That will be a leader day prior to summit. So it will be the beginning of summit and we will have a leader day all in the special location that I'm not going to tell you where we're going yet, but trust me, you're going to be so excited. Um, take a guess, drop it in the chat where you think that we're going to be going and I'm excited to surprise you like so many plans in the works, getting that all situated. Um, but if you're wanting to get at that leader day, and this should be something that you're wanting to work towards to be a part of, um, then make sure that between April 1st and June 30th, you are selling one product, hitting that 500 volume, and or getting someone a bundle. That's all that it takes. It's very simple um, so that you can go on that leader day with us. What to know for Beachbody? Virtual Super Weekend is April 10th. What is Virtual Super Weekend, you may be asking? Well, friend, good question. So Virtual Super Weekend is awesome. They used to have things called Super Saturdays where we would actually go meet up in person. Well, because of COVID, they had to change it to virtual, but it's still cool because you get to see what is coming. I don't know if anyone else is super excited for more information on this Amwala program, but I am, and I have a feeling they're going to be announcing it. At the Super Weekends, they normally have a workout. They'll tell you what products are coming out, what programs are coming out. It's definitely something to tune into and listen to. I will share details for that in our team page. That way you can see it. Let's Get Up is the new Shanti program that is going to be kicking off. VIP access window starts April 19th. And then day one of that program is May 3rd if you're doing VIP with him. Um, what you should know, we will have, I'm going to try and snag us a spot on Sean's call with corporate, but we also have Michelle Brees, who is actually going through this program right now. She is a success starter, and so she earned a spot in this program, so she is literally doing it beside Sean every single day. She'll be done with it in a couple of weeks, I believe, and so after she finishes and she gets the A-OK -okay to talk about it, because it, right now it is totally 100% top secret, she's going to do a live call for us um, so that you can ask her all the questions you want, but mark your calendars for April 19th um, if you're wanting to get in on that VIP launch. Um, I love dancing, and I love weights, so I think hell yes.
Also, like I talked about, preferred customer is coming mid-May, so be on the lookout for that. If you are that preferred customer who you're like, yes, I'm ready, don't worry, you can reclassify your account as soon as it happens. We will keep you all in the know. If you are not a preferred customer and you are a coach and wondering how this is going to help, then definitely jump on Mastermind with us because I'm going to be going into details on kind of how you could use it for your business and, and what we need to be aware of as working coaches to let this leverage our business, right? Also, mark off your calendar July 15th through 17th because that is Team Summit. Beachbody is doing a virtual event, but you know me, I love to travel. I love time with my favorite people. I'm a quality time girl. So mark your calendars because we have some awesome things planned for Summit this year, and I hope that you can be there with us. Um, the whole goal, it's called Team Summit because the whole goal is really that team building, just the community, the, the friendships, that is everything that we want and more. So it's going to be absolutely amazing. And before I kick it over to Amy, last but not least, salted caramel. If you have been wanting to get it, but you're a little afraid, go get some. Hurry before it is gone because once it is gone, it is gone for good. It is a seasonal flavor. Um, and trust me, you're going to be real mad if you get to the end of it and you're like, oh, I really should have got that. Ask me how I know. Um, but that is what we have for Divine Dynasty and Beachbody. If you have any questions about any of these, please don't hesitate. But for now, I am going to kick it over to Amy and she is going to lead tonight's team call. Do you have to make me the host? Yeah, I, I can't hear you. I have to be the host. To Why do you want to be the host? To share. Um, I don't know if it'll let me switch with you recording. Hold on. Um, make host. Here we go. Did it work? I'm the host now. Yeah, look at me. I am the host now. Let me see. Yeah. Woo. Okay, and we're still recording. We're good. Uh, I hope this is it. Uh, now I have to find my things. How do I? There we go. Hopefully, I don't have like <laughs> some bad stuff pulled up. Woo. Only me. Let me get my life in line here, friends. Okay, can you see me? Good to go. Okay. So, hi. Um, if you don't know me, I don't know how the hell you don't because I mean, I'm Amy motherfucking Bly. Here we are. We are here together tonight for me to um, speak about what it really means to show up through the hard times. So I want to know in the chat, um, drop it in the chat right now. If you've ever caught yourself saying, I just fell off the wagon. I just need a push. I just like, just, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, not with it right now. I just, I need some motivation. I just, you know, need like a pick me up. I need someone to hold me accountable, right? I'm not going to judge you. I want you to be honest. I want you to be honest and tell me in the chat if that is you. Because friend, I'm talking to you tonight. And we're going to share my story and um, how I got started my journey through this, this whole season of just showing up for myself and how I never let the hard seasons of my life stop me from at least showing up at the bare minimum. Because not life is not going to be perfect. Life is going to be really messy a lot of times, and I went through my fair share of shit, okay? So I just want to give you permission right now to be open to listening and just take whatever you need from this call, um, and I'm super excited to get started with you. So showing up through the hard. I've been with Beachbody for three years, and how I've kind of made this journey my own. Okay, so where I started was February 2018. Um, 
I was 230 pounds and I finally decided to send Deidre a message. Deidre had asked me to do this several thousand times before and I had told her no. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to spend the money. I don't want to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And I finally decided that I had enough. I was pushing a size 18 pant. Um, I weighed more than I did whenever I was pregnant with my oldest and I was tired. I was so tired. I was working two jobs with two kids and my husband was working 12 hour shifts plus overtime. And I'm just like, I cannot continue on this road because if I do, I don't know what the hell's going to happen. I'd already taken diet pills. I'd already been given that crap. The doctor tried to get me on that stuff. And then I stopped taking the diet pills gained even more weight. I'm like, I have to make actual change now. Like this is the time it is do or die. I must do this. So in the beginning, I had a very hard season, right? Working two jobs, friends. So when anyone comes at me with, I don't have the time, I'm like, listen, two jobs, two kids, no time at all. This is what saved my life. Taking, doing a workout in between jobs before I started work, um, on my lunch, whatever, and planning out my meals for the day. It's the only thing that kept me on track and I lost weight, friends. I lost 10 inch, 10 pounds, 12 inches in my first month. And I didn't expect that change. I didn't expect that change to happen. And I was dumbfounded because I'm like, oh my God, I've never made change like this. I've never lost weight in that short amount of time. The only time that I've lost weight is because like, I just randomly stepped on the scale with the doctor and I'm like, oh, what happened? Like I lost weight this time. It's usually the, the scale going up when I actually committed to this. And I did this in one of the hardest times of my life. And I saw change and I knew I was hooked. I couldn't live without this. So what happens when life gets hard? I understand life is getting it hard, right? I started out in my journey in the hardest most time crunch time of my life, but it didn't stop there. And most times life is not going to stop there for you. You're going to go through hard things. You're going to go through easy things. And then you're going to go through hard things again. It's just going to be a cycle. So whenever you start your journey and you're like, have the best intentions in the whole wide world of doing all of the things and you're going to be so perfect. And then life comes back and bites you in the ass. And it's like, listen, you said you wanted this. Do you really want it? That's when this comes in. So what happens when life gets hard? Let me explain a few of my events that I had happen in my life. Um, okay, so we already talked about this, working two jobs with two kids. Um, family drama, <laughs> plenty of family drama from having my uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law move in plus their boyfriend um, I went from a family of four to a family of seven in a two bedroom house. Hmm. Let me tell you about drama, unexpected financial issues. Um, I was about a year into this journey whenever I finally decided that we needed to file bankruptcy. We were so far in debt, we could not get our way out. And this whole working two jobs, and then Tim was working two, two, three jobs at this point. And we're like, we are drowning. We have to do something right freaking now. And right then I was scared. I was really freaking scared. I was terrified that when you go through a bankruptcy like that, you have someone called a trustee and they go through all of your finances. And I was terrified that she was going to tell me, you have to stop paying for beach body. So I'm like, this is the only thing that's keeping me sane. What am I going to do if that happens? And thankfully it didn't. Unexpected financial issues. My best friend in the whole wide world got brain cancer. And it really threw me for a loop. Cause I'm like, what is going on with this life? Like this, this is not allowed to happen. It's not allowed to happen. He's like my person and he has brain cancer. Like trying to decide, are you going to have surgery? What's going to happen? And all of the treatments and everything like that. It was a big emotional time for me. 
friend drama. Hmm. When you have a friend that you thought was your best friend in the whole wide world and they just don't support you, right? And they're just not the one that's going to support you through through this journey that you're on. And the journey is so hard in itself. And then they just pull, pour salt in the wound, telling you how much of a bad friend you are because you forgot about them. And they're not willing to come to the middle with you. And here you are in this most emotional time of your life and you're trying to make changes for yourself. And then they're coming back and saying, you're not good enough. You're not a good enough friend. So then your mean girl is screaming in the back of your head. And I was this close to quitting. This close. I was talked off the ledge. But I'm going to tell you how. So friend drama. And then I made the decision to go to counseling. I made the decision to go to counseling because I needed control over my anxiety. I needed control of my life. I needed to be able to not feel like this anymore. And it was because I started my journey that I decided to go to counseling. And the feelings that came with that, oh my gosh, that was an incredibly hard season for me. And I'm going to tell you what. I spent weekends, whole weekends drinking that summer because I couldn't handle my own feelings because I wanted to numb out because I didn't want to feel the shit she was making me talk about. So tell me you fell off the wagon because I drank my summer away. I gained weight that summer. I, <laughs> I took progress that I had and I threw it in the trash. But did I stop? Hell the fuck no, I did not. And then I decided to change jobs. Blue Cross was just sucking the life out of me. And I'm like, listen, I need something different. Maybe going back to retail would actually change my life. And I had this whole thing of like, maybe I can be a full-time health and fitness coach. Maybe I can be with Beach Friday. Maybe I can do that. But man, let's try this first. And it just, it, I mean, in the time of my life and, and where I was financially, it's just the move that I needed to make to get to the next step, right? And I thought it was going to be this thing that it was going to change my life and I was going to be able to help people and I was going to be able to be around people all day because that's what I love to do. And it was not what I expected. I traveled for, I want to say, what, six weeks straight. I would come home a couple days and then I'd travel again. I worked out in hotels. I ate out every meal, but I chose the best things I could. I took healthy snacks with me. I made sure I was on top of my workouts. I was 90% good during that travel time. And I think that time was the least stressful time. It was way more stressful when we actually got into our home store. When we actually got into the store, we had to start setting the place up. And then that's when all of the stress came down on me because there was less buffer between me and my manager. And then it became me and my manager together all of the time. And she caused me so much stress. I can't even tell you. And then I decide... In the middle of that, I would throw in a 21-day reset because it would be fun, right? Well, I mean, I lost a lot of weight, and I learned a lot of things about my body, and it was not fun at all. But I went through that in the middle of trying to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with this job if we're ever going to move. Dealing with her bullshit every day coming in and not knowing what I was going to walk into. And I still showed up. Major house issues. Things that I don't ever, ever, ever wish on anyone. And I'm going to tell you, in the middle of these major house issues that I was dealing with, expensive house issues that I was dealing with and a lot of people in a small space on top of that. And then you add in the pandemic. All of that happened at the same time. So I couldn't get out of the house, right? Except to go to work. And that was total hell because right when we opened the store, um, we had COVID restrictions coming down and we're like, are we going to shut down? What's going to happen? I went down from 
full-time to part-time, full-time to part-time hours, 40 hours to 20. Talk about a financial strain. And I'm panicking. And I have this huge bill to deal with from all of these really bad things that are going on in my house and the pandemic on top of that. That test group that we did, 10 rounds test group, is the only thing that saved me from not drinking every single day. I'm going to tell you that right now because it took that one thing away from me that I had to numb and I had to deal with my issues and I had to face everything because I made a commitment to myself to not drink, to not cheat, to be 100% on plan. Friends, all of that, all of that, and then we decided to move. We finally decided to make the move. And that has brought a whole more host of issues. Not issues in a way that I can't deal with it. It has been the hardest transition that I have ever had. And it's harder than I had ever expected it to be. I went from being around people 24 seven and retail around groups, around people to being here alone. And I fell into a depression for a good solid two weeks and I barely showed up. I barely did the things, but I did them. I never stopped. I kept showing up. And these last eight months has been me fighting every single day to keep showing up for my life, to keep showing up for my business, to keep showing up for my health. The only thing that gets me through is this community, are these people, are you guys on the screen right now? If you don't lean into the community, you are gonna be left alone. Because sometimes, sometimes we get caught up in our own shit. So don't, please don't sit there and say, they don't care about me because they're not reaching out. I need someone to keep, my, keep me accountable. No, it's your job. It is your job to lean in. It is your job to raise your white flag. It is your job to ask for help. That's what I've done so many times over because I know sometimes we don't want to ask the question because we know the answer we're going to get. And sometimes that answer we're going to get is pull your head out of your ass. Okay? Sometimes we're going to get those hard answers. But sometimes it's what we need to be able to move to the next step. That has what is what I've done over and over and over and over again for three years. I've asked the questions. Sometimes I've feared the answers and sometimes I've hidden from the question until I couldn't hide anymore and I had to ask it. I've been butt hurt many, many times over things that I've been told that I needed to fix, that I needed to do, but I knew, I knew in my heart it's because I needed it and because they love me enough that they're willing to bring that to my attention. Now, if I were to turn around and walk away, I wouldn't still be here. I wouldn't still be fighting. I wouldn't be in the best place that I have been in a very long time. Now, but why even keep going? Yeah, it's all fine and good, but this shit is hard, right? Like, I had to cheat. I skipped a week of workouts. My life is so busy, I just don't have the time. I'm not motivated. I'm not getting the results I want. My family is just so demanding. I can't get on my nutrition. I need someone to keep me accountable. Now, I know probably all of us have had these excuses. All of us have had these reasons to not keep going. All of us have had these, these voices in our heads. What do you do about it though? What is it? It's okay to have that thought. It's okay to say that, but what are you gonna do to change it? What are you gonna do to show back up for your nutrition, to show back up for your workouts, to show back up whenever you're not motivated, to show back up when you don't have the time, to show back up when you need someone to keep you accountable? I mean, 
That's what all of these resources are here for you every single day. And that's why we are here together as a team every single day to battle all of these excuses. And this is where it gets real. Okay, first of all, everything on the last side is total bullshit. Okay, it's bullshit. You have to stop giving up if you want to stop starting over. You have to find commitment and a why to keep you going. Commitment and a why. Those are the only two things that you need, friends. Don't overcomplicate this shit. Commitment and the why. Commitment goes with your why. What is your why? Can you drop it in the chat right now? Do you know what your why is? Is it so down deep that you can pull your ass out of bed and get your workout done in the morning? Or you can make sure that you do your workout before you go to bed, that you can make sure that you grab the better, better choice in the kitchen but rather than the bad one? Is your why deep enough that it's gonna keep you showing up? Because if it's not, I'm gonna tell you it's half the problem your why and your commitment. Commitment to yourself. That is your responsibility. It is none of our else's responsibility to make you show up. You have to show up for your own life. Because if you don't, what are you showing up for? If you have nothing to stand for, what are you falling for, right? I read that in Buy Yourself the Fucking Billies the other day. And I'm like, boom. If you have nothing to for, what will you fall for? If you have nothing to stand for in this life, you're never going to truly fall in love with this life. I didn't get here being perfect. I'm going to tell you that right now. I did not get here being perfect. And I can guarantee you, anyone that's been here for a long time can tell you the same damn thing. Deidre can tell you that. I guarantee it. What I did, what I did is I started and I followed the plan. I followed the plan as it was laid out in front of me. And if I had questions, I asked. If I thought this was wrong, I asked. I asked for permission a lot of times to make sure, can I have this one thing? I, I remember in the beginning of the journey, I'm like, we're going to go have Monocle's Pizza as a family and I'm nervous. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't, should I not eat the pizza? Should I like, like just avoid that? Like, and she, Deidre told me, listen, Amy, save your carbs for dinner. Have the damn pizza. And I ate a salad with it. Like, come on, eat the damn pizza. But I'm telling you, if you want results, do not come at me. Do not come at me saying this doesn't work if you don't follow the plan. I know in my own life, in my own heart, in my own body, what happens when I have nutrition 1,010%. I get damn good results. But at some point, you have to find a balance in this life. You find that balance until you follow the damn plan. Follow the plan as it's laid out, and then you can start to find out what your body needs, that intuitive eating. But you cannot do that, cannot pass go, you cannot collect your monopoly money until you've put in the work, friend. Earn that shit. Okay, so here's... Here is the tactical part of this call, okay? I've, I've laid out some steps for you. What can I do to make sure I show up? It's all fine and dandy that I'm gonna yell at you and tell you to pull your head out of your ass and all your excuses are bullshit, right? But what can you do to get to that point? What can you do to channel your inner Amy motherfucking Bly and crush some shit? First, you gotta change your language. There is no falling off the wagon, stopping, restarting. There's only you continuing your life. I, mm, it brings the Jesus out of, out of me. Whenever I hear, I fell off the wagon. When I hear, I just need to restart. When I hear, I just need to look. Huh, I just, I need something for my nutrition. I just don't know what. No, 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 no. 
You need to continue this life because this life is the only life you have. It is the only life that you have. And this body is the only body that you have. So stop starting and stopping. Get that out of your head. That vocabulary is no longer allowed here. What you do is continue your life. From today, tomorrow, next day, three months from now, you're going to have a cheat, I'm sure. You're going to have be a little too many carbs, a few more too many drinks, whatever. This is your life, friends. This is not meant to live on restriction. This is meant for you to enjoy your life. Have fucking fun. Lean into a group. These accountability groups are here for that very purpose. The Zooms and the team page, there's no reason that you cannot get the support you need. Show up because your life depends on this. Your life depends on this. If you have to get so damn disturbed deep down in your soul that if I don't show up, lean in, do whatever I can in this season of my life, then it's all going to end. It's all going to crumble. If you have to shake yourself up that much, then do it. Lean into the support because it's here for you every single day. For goodness sakes, stop making excuses. Your excuses are your way out. Stop making them. Face and overcome them. Write them out. Burn them. Whatever you have to do. But get rid of your excuses. And I understand we all have them and you're probably going to come across them again. But if you can face them when you see them, that right there is growth, friends. And of course, just love the process. Just love the process. If you don't love each stage you are in, you're never going to be happy doing this. I'm going to tell you that time between go back to these slides we're gonna back all these faces all these faces i was loving every single step you have to love every single step and be so fucking proud of yourself that you can't even stand it be rad be yourself every single day. Love this process, process that you're going through because I'm going to tell you, if you stick with it, if you stay here and you stick with it, you're going to find a whole nother person. Maybe in a year, maybe in two years, maybe in three years, you're going to discover a whole new you that you really wanted to find but you never did before. That was me. And it's taken a lot of time and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get here. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm so thankful that I stayed. I'm so thankful that I haven't given up. I'm so thankful that I've been so fucking relentless in this process because I can sit here today in the apartment I never thought I was going to have in the office that I always dreamed of. Speaking on a call that I always envisioned being on. You have to dream that dream, whether it's for your health, for your fitness, for your business, for your life, for your, for your family's life, for your goals, wherever you wanna go. Just be yourself and love the process that you're going through. Just love your damn self. You're going to discover over time, after once you go through these hard, hard seasons, when you go through these hard, hard seasons, you're going to find that superpower inside of you that you never, ever knew was there. And it's that relentless fire inside of you. Whatever your word is, you're going to find your superpower and you're going to bring it out and you're going to show it to the world because you're so fucking proud because you didn't give up, because you didn't fall off the wagon, because you didn't just reach, because you just keep getting back up. Hannah told me last night this analogy she thinks of herself as 
a baby calf. And a baby calf, you know, doesn't just get up and walk. A baby calf is born and then stumbles and falls. And then it gets back up and stumbles and falls. And then it gets back up and stumbles and falls. If you can adopt that in your head of every time that you think you fuck up and you think that you fell off the wagon and you think that this is just it, if you can think of a baby calf and you in that place and you're just getting back up again and then eventually you walk, hey, you've done your damn job already. Just know that you are enough right here, right now, as you are in this place. And it is your job to enjoy the process, stop making the excuses, and show up for your life every single day. I think that's it. I think that's all I have. Let me um, stop sharing so I can see all your chats. And anyone who wants to chime in, but I think that was my last one. <laughs> I'm reading through chats now. If anybody has any questions or comments that they would love to leave for Amy, now is the time to unmute and ask. Dude, that was life. Like, taking me to church. Oh, thanks. Preach it, sister. No questions? Don't be afraid. I won't yell at you. <laughs> I promise. But it really, ha it really has been. I mean, this this process of these last three years have been the most trying and most beautiful and most amazing and and worst and best and everything all rolled into one. Um, but it's just life. And if you can adopt that behavior of this is just your life. And there is no starting and stopping point. Mm -hmm. I mean, how amazing would that be? And stop waiting for fucking permission from someone else to just be yourself. Like, friend, there is no one else in the world like you. So why not just go ahead and own that now? Just kind of put that on your shoulders right now. Just know that. That's, that's all you really need. <laughs> all right. Well, if no one has anything, we can go ahead and close this out. I